when we put that together, if you go back in history, you look at that, and I was trying to incorporate groundwork in into my thing because I knew that, you know, I knew the Gracies, mm -hmm. and I knew that 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 was that was going to be a big thing. Hey guys, welcome to my full interview with Jeff Langton, actor, stuntman, martial artist, blues musician, boxing coach, and more. Wears a lot of hats. Really cool guy, happy to call him a friend. Actually met him through the channel, which is really cool about this channel. We're gonna share his story, going back to the 80s and 90s, working, doing stunt doubling work with Sylvester Sloan, working alongside Jean-Claude Van Damme, working with Sheldon Lettich, Frank Dukes, Lawrence Lamas, and more. So anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video but let's start with the beginning let's get the story so a lot of people have seen you in a lot of different films you got ties to the boxing world etc how did it all start how did you even break into movies into the movie business or how i started in martial arts well we could even go further back if you want <laughs> well let, let's we'll let's start from the beginning because you know and I, i'll be brief on it um i got in a, i was in a gang um i was uh kind of a gang leader, uh, part of a gang. And I got in a street fight down in a creek and this uh, Latino kid, he gave me a tune up. And I said to myself, I said, I'm never gonna have, have this happen to me again. And my father, who was a boxer in the Marine Corps, you know, his idea of giving me uh, boxing gloves on uh, Christmas and taking me out in the backyard on Christmas and my birthday and uh, showing me what the art of pugilism is. So anyway, getting back to the story. Um, so I saw Cato uh, on the Green Hornet, uh, basically uh, Bruce Lee, and I wanted to learn how to fight like the Chinese guy. So wow, that guy can really fight, man. If I could fight like him, I'll, you know, I'll be into it. Okay. So we lived in uh, San Jose at that time. And I went down to Watanabe's Dry Goods and it was a Japanese store and they had karate geese and i said hey i want to learn that kung fu stuff oh there's this guy up the street you know he teaches uh karate go up and see him so i took my silver 10 speed and i rode up the street to fourth street so i was about 12 11 years old and i started in shotokan karate uh with a guy by the name of chuck kaiosi chuck okamira rest in peace and a guy named leonard lafferty leonard lafferty was in the gym and he said hey brah Go over there and uh, clean the floor. So as a little kid, like 11 or 12, start cleaning the floor. So you come back on Monday and bring your mom and we'll talk about it. So I got my mom and it was $12 and 50 cents a month mm -hmm. to uh, start karate lessons. And I, I went up to Greenbelt. Then I, uh, I was about 16, 17. And then I went to Ernie Reyes, who was trained under a guy named uh, Dan Choi. So I started there and I, Got my black belt with uh, with Ernie Reyes, and he went on to be West Coast uh, Taekwondo. It's in it's in my uh, history, so I won't bore because I know you have questions. Um, but you know, I, I knew Ernie Jr. I, I was a collegiate gymnast and a high school gymnast. I took Ernie Reyes Jr. to learn how to do gymnastics with me under under a guy from Japan. He was the first Japanese gymnast to ever do a triple twister on the floor and his name was Wachiro Mickey. So Mickey San was my gymnastics coach. And then I went on and uh I don't want to forget Mr. Ron Lu, Sifu Ron Lu, uh Fuja Pai. When I was a little kid I looked through his window and he invited me in and he trained me for free. Even though I was taking shoulder kind I wanted to train with him. So anyway, you know here 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 it is, you know, I'm 65 years old. I've had a, uh, a, a bicuspid valve on my heart. I've been living seven years with a, with a bad heart, taking medication. That's why I got bloated because of uh, the medication. And I'll be having the biggest challenge of my life. But anything you want to ask me, David, go ahead, because I could just keep on talking. I want to give you guys an update. So I talked to Jeff prior to him going into surgery. Open heart surgeries was kind of a big deal. I am happy to report that he is doing very well. He is recovering and he's kind of going to have a second chance on life, which is great. Let's go back to uh, you were in a gang. Like, 
why were you in a gang? Why did you decide to join a gang? Oh, uh, because they, uh, because I was, uh, I came from a basically, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money at that time. And, and I got, I got fed good on Monday because they would, you know, they robbed the drunks out in, uh, you know, at the bars and stuff. And I'm not going to mention their names, but yeah, sure. one of them still alive. The other brother, he's passed away. And, and I just, uh, they were, they were, you know, that's how I got into boxing too. You know, I mean, because of them. So why was I in that? Uh, be- I don't even know why. I mean, it was uh, just part of my life, you know, and uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, we had a lot of fun riding around in the cars and going to the clubs and dancing and fighting. And, you know, I saw a lot of bad things in my life. You know, uh, these guys were playing pool. This will be in my book. They were playing pool. And I saw a guy stab a guy like like inches from me. I never seen anybody get stabbed before he stabbed the guy hit the guy hit the eight ball, went in the pocket, and the guy the money was on the table. He grabbed the money, and the guy took out like a steak knife, like a big steak knife, and stabbed the guy right next to me. And the place just burst into fighting. Jeez, so it was let, a little let me violent ask you this, thing. Jeff. Um, did, when you got into martial arts, though, did you quit the gang, or were you a, a martial arts gang guy? Um, I was still, I was still, um, I was still affiliated with them, of course. They were my okay. brothers. Up until when, though? Really you eventually got out of that life, though, right? And, pardon me? You eventually got out of that life. Like, when When did you quit the gang? Well, that's that's when I, um, they, uh, I don't want to talk about that part of my life, but they kind of took me to a youth camp. And, uh, and then I, that's when I found the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Oh, nice. Okay, so basically, religion and Christ got you out of the gang. Yes, it did. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. And I'm still, I mean, that's that's uh, the main interest of my life is, you know, my relationship with my Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, I mean, I'm not perfect. That's obvious. But, but I mean, he's really, he's really been a big impact in my life and staying out of trouble and you know, and having some kind of ethics and morals in myself. I, my main, my main purpose in life is to help other people now. Nice. Um, you know, I, I, I love people. I love to talk. I love to, you know, make people happy. I love people to smile. I love people to, to be basically, you know, I want to help people. That's, that's my main mission. I, I own a boxing gym at Burbank, Langton's Boxing and Martial Arts for 14 years. And they call me the Pope of Oak Street. I'm go. the Pope of Oak. That's no joke. Put on this earth to give you some hope. I'm Jeff Langton. I'll hit you with the ton. And uh-oh, you might not have no fun. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the, uh, you were with Ernie Reyes, the demo team. You were doing gymnastics like in college. Now, how did you end up in Hollywood, though? Well, I think that you guys probably understand I have a, a little bit of a New York accent. My father was uh, from Brooklyn, New York, Flatbush. My mother's from Alabama. And I have my aunt, Aunt Pat. She lives in uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, at that time when I was a troublemaker, I would, I would say, um, they put me on a bus, a 16-year-old kid on a bus, and they sent me. <laughs> they wouldn't do that today. That'd be child abuse. But sure. they sent me on a bus and send me back to my aunts and I, I lived in, in Brooklyn and, uh, I, um, you know, I, I love going back to, because on 4th of July, I mean, you know, back at that time in Brooklyn, they would light up the streets with the fireworks and I love fireworks. And, uh, you know, that, that place was a breeding ground for criminals as everybody knows. Mm. And, um, I met this one man, his name was Lolly. Uh, Lolly was, uh, um, an Italian man. Um, he was a boxer. He used to box with Marky Marciano and I had some boxing skills and he wanted to take me under his wing to be a fighter for him. Okay. And, uh, so he taught me how to count the punches. Like when, uh, he says that boxers have habits and when boxers, uh, like they do a jab, you know, the right hands and it comes. So you, you know, you slip, you know, you counter punch. He says, count the punches, and that's how you're going to know your fighter because boxers have habits, and I still use that method today 
of, you know, teaching my fighters like, hey, count the punches, watch what the guy's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if he does a couple of jabs, that right hand's going to come. You know, you can sidestep, slip, and counter punch. You understand? Because the most important punch in boxing is the jab. Why? Because it sets up all the punches. Mm -hmm. And it'll put you back into an unbalanced position. Whenever you throw a right hand, either you're orthodox or, or either you're orthodox or southpaw, after you throw your left hand or you throw your right hand, you're going to be a little bit off balance. I don't care what any boxing trainer says. You're going to shift your weight. You understand? Mm -hmm. You're going to shift your weight from different sides in your, in your movement. And that's how, by counting the punches, is a lost art of boxing like fainting. Mm. We'll talk more about the boxing a little bit later because you were involved in the movie film world prior to that. So... How'd you get involved? Was it through like Ernie Reyes? Because I know they they did some. Film okay, work now or... you're talking about the how I got. Well, so after I was in Brooklyn, New York, you know, my uncle had we live in a little flat in uh, Independence Avenue. Um, he said, "Hey, why don't you go to Hollywood and try to be a stuntman?" Okay, that's random. <laughs> so, got him. I got on a. I guess got him back on the bus again. Went home. Got, got some kind of car and I drove to Hollywood. I met a guy by the name of Eric Lee. Mm -hmm. I don't know if every, everybody should know Eric Lee. He was the king of Kata. He's like one of my closest friends. And he said, uh, I said, hey, I was with a guy by the name of Harry Mock. We drove down together the first time. Okay. I, I got I to gotta remember my history. We drove down the first time. And then um, I told him, I said, hey, um, can you help me get a job? And it was a guy named Julio Hernandez at uh, the Palace Nightclub on Vine. And I started working there as a doorman. And I worked there for two and a half years. Okay. Okay. Across the street from Capitol Records, I worked there. And for the first six months, I was living in my car. And um, this guy by the name of Harold Diamond uh, came up to me and says, Hey, they have um, auditions out of Universal Studios to play uh, in the live. Conan the Barbarian show. So I, I went out there and I said, well, Harold, how much did you pay? Oh, the 36 bucks. I said, ah, I don't want to do that. You know, he goes, $36 a show, but you do six shows a day. So I went out there and there's probably about over 200 guys that tried out, maybe 160, 200 guys. And um, I went and I did my, my swords because I knew a little bit of Kung Fu swords, double swords. And uh, basically the, the guy that was he hired me, called me back and hired me. Oh, you were, and, I didn't know you were part of that show. Yeah, I was part of that show. Matter of fact, I got by a guy named Mark DeCoscos. Yeah, you know, he Mark was part DeCoscos. of that show too. Yeah, he was part of that show too. I met Mark and his mom, Malia. Um, and a Karen Shepard was on that show. Uh, Brian Thompson was on that show. So I worked up oh, wow. there for about two years. And, and, and that's when um, they, um, they said, hey, uh, you know, you want to try out for this movie called Lethal Games. You know, and I said, OK, so I went down there and I met Frank Stallone. OK, oh, Frank Stallone. Okay. Sure. And prior to that, I went down to try out for Rocky, too. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first time I met Sly. So I already had an induction with his brother. I said, hey, I met your brother on Rocky, too. I was boxing at Muhammad Ali's gym at that time. I was a professional boxing sparring partner. I never turned professional as a uh, as a boxer, but I, um, you know, I, I used to go in and spar because I, 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 you know, I, I came from a professional boxing gym. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they pay me like 50 bucks, you know, per round or, you know, I box with world champions. So uh, getting back to the movie thing. Um, so they hired me and I worked up there for two and a half years. And like I said, I met Frank Sloan and the first movie I ever starred in was with Frank Stallone. I had no acting training. I didn't know anything about acting. Mm -hmm. And I, I played the crazy guy. And I said, well, this ain't going to be hard to do, right? Sure. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so basically, I did that. And then I worked with his brother. And I did like six movies with his brother. And I became friends. and still still friends with uh, Sly to this day. We text back and forth. And uh at the tribute for Harry Mock, I played a, a nice message from Sly. Harry is very good friends with Sly, too. 
And, yeah, that's uh, cool. Let me ask you this, Jeff. So you were literally like Stallone's um, a stunt double, right? Like you doubled yes. Stallone in a lot of those movies. Yeah, no, but you know, the thing is when people say that you Sly stunt double, you know, he doesn't like that. I mean, and I understand that, but, but, you know, Sly, you know, I mean, you got to understand something. They got millions and millions of dollars in a movie. They're, they're not going to have him, you know, skip across the floor and trip and break his leg. Mm -hmm. They have completion bonds. So when people say that there's stunt double, the thing is you're there just to do something where he's not going to get injured. You understand? Yeah. And um, yes, yes, I work for him and uh, I love the guy and the guy's, the guy's been a mentor to me. I, I mean, I did, I did Rocky five. I trained Tommy Morrison for Rocky five. I did Tango and Cash with him. I did uh, Cobra with him. I did a lot of movies. He's, he's a, he's a great guy. You know, he's a wonderful man. His brother, you know, they're like family to me, you know, you know, I mean, they're like, you know, just like your, your, your friend there, Jean-Claude, Jean-Claude's like my brother, you know, and I love Jean-Claude. And yeah, you know, Jean -Claude that, that's was, awesome. We'll, and we'll have to talk more about Jean-Claude soon. I got to ask though, what was like the most memorable either stunt or incident or anything else that took place on like, uh, when you were working with Stallone? Uh, I was in Thailand and, uh, the most memorable, memorable thing, and it still hurts, is when uh, Harold kicked my leg, and uh, and I didn't really understand that, uh, you know, that I had to have the correct padding. But you know, uh, that was that was the first time that I was introduced that hey, when you're a stuntman, you know, they they're gonna make it look real, and you know, you're gonna get injured. I don't care. I mean, you know, uh, kick your leg like on what movie? That was Rambo Three. Oh, I and was thinking I that because of Thailand. Oh, so the you mean the stick fighting? Like you? Yeah, yeah. I was doing that. I was. I took scene? the kick to the leg. Oh, that was you. And then I did. And I did some kicks that slide. You know, slide didn't do, but, but you know, he did. He did it most of everything. I just did the, uh, the stuff that were you know, that they wanted to look. And I mean, that fight scene is amazing. I love that fight and, scene. And then, uh, you know, like stuntman. I'm not a stuntman, so I don't care anymore. But. But I broke my wrist on Tango and Cash. I was, uh, they slide back fist me. You can see it. And then I went back and then I landed on my wrist and I kind of busted my wrist. So, okay. I mean, you, you get, when you do, when you're stumbling, you're going to get injured, man. Yeah, I mean, sure. that's what they Part pay you territory. for. Yeah. You know, just like Steven Seagal. I mean, Steven says, hey, you know, that's what I'm paying you for. You know, he's going to, you know, he's going to hit you. But like I told Steven, I said, hey, Steven, after you hit him the first time, what's the next take? You know, you send him off to the hospital. But um, like I doubled Alex Baldwin on um, on uh, Minnie's first time, and I was the one that went through the window. Mm -hmm. And um, I dislocated my my bicep, but still, I got like a disfigurement. You know, they paid me for money for that. But but you know, stunt stunts is uh, like Jean Claude told me. You know, hey, you got the good look. You know, you need to be in the movies. You need got to be an actor. You know, and he was right. But uh, we're, we're talking more about uh, Sly right now. Um, what a wonderful man. And like, mm -hmm. like, look at his career. I mean, he's he's still the king, doing it. Man. Still at the top of his game. And I worked with him when he was at Clerical. I mean, he was the main guy. And yeah. here I am, a 28-year-old guy, double, you know, working, stand-in friend, you know, going all over the place with him. I mean, my it was a beautiful time in my life, you know. No doubt, no doubt. Because I really thought you're, I guess, outside of stunts, the the acting really started with Lionheart, though, because you had, uh, you know, we, everybody could see it was you and you had a very memorable dialogue, right? I don't know if I want to fight you. Well, fuck you. Ooh, funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, it'll be on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not too soon. No, but, you'll uh, be yeah, fine, man. Lionheart, um, how'd you how'd you get involved in Lionheart? We gotta talk about that. So oh, okay. Um well, you know, I you know I know Frank Dukes and uh and um uh, I love the guy. The guy's probably one of the sweetest guys in the world. The guy helped me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like your cat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bet cat. Frank Dukes likes my cat too. <laughs> I guess we got I don't have to be I guess we like cats. Yeah. But uh, 
so how that happened was uh, Frankie, um, as I call him, uh, he said, uh, hey, Jeff, I have a audition with JC. I said, JC. Because me and JC, you know, we, we butted heads a little bit, but that's not true. And, oh, I heard uh, I heard about that. So you basically used to train, or actually taught people even at like Frank Dukes's uh, dojo back in the day, right? Yes, I did. That's cool. Frank Dukes. So so the story starts like this: is that they have what they call a drama log, and Frank Dukes had an ad in the drama log. It said, "Become a stunt man, come down to my stunt school," and um, it was you know reasonable. So I called him on the phone. This is like what, 45 years ago, 43 years ago? That was a while ago. And um, so I drove down there, and uh, basically he said, hey, uh, I like, you know, I like your portfolio, and you're with Ernie Reyes, and I heard about you. And I said, yeah. And he goes, uh, how would you like to teach at my school? Okay. And I said, I said, how about I teach at your school, and you teach me how to be stunts? Mm. And he goes, yeah, and he goes, I'm with this guy named Hubie Kearns. Now, this is a piece of history, y'all. Hubie Kearns was a, the double for Adam West in the Batman. He's the one that did all the driving. He did all the fight work. And Hubie, Hubie was a very instrumental man in my life. He started training me and with Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes is uh, very good with the lenses. Okay. You know, he's very good with the camera. That's why Lionheart look so good is because Frank, you know, his influence with the camera and Sheldon and, you know. Oh, really? Um, so Frank actually gave insight on the technical aspects on, on, yes. on like some of the show. Oh, that's yes. Frank, Frank is, uh, uh, he was Frank's from Canada, but people don't even know. And Frank was up there and he was part of the Canadian stuntman up there in Canada. And, uh, Frank is very knowledgeable. He's a very good writer and, uh, should get more credit where credits due. But, you know, that's another whole topic. But Frank, um, you know, basically, you know, took me and I trained at his school a little while. I didn't know much about the guy at that time, you know. Um, yeah, sure. You know, he used to uh, basically uh, disappear. Like he would go places and I, you know, and he'd leave me, hey, Jeff, will you teach the class, you know. And uh, I said, okay, you know, I teach boxing. I said, well, I don't know this whatever it was a ninjutsu is that what he teaches and then duke's ninjutsu duke's really and i didn't know anything about it but to me it looked like shotokan karate because i already and it looked like martial arts to me and i said oh i could teach the kicks and the the tumbling and you know all, i knew all that stuff so i said okay so then he would disappear and um and i, I thought that was very odd that he never would found out where he went or what he did though well, he told me that um, he was going down to Nicaragua. Oh, okay. He told me that, and um, I'm going to be, I'll say right now that these guys, these guys were in the gym, and they were Nicaraguan soldiers. Mm -hmm. And um, they were learning, they, I guess they came from Nicaragua to learn this, this uh, ninjutsu stuff. And I, I talked, I, at that time, I, I, I didn't, I'm very fluent in Spanish, but I, I mean, I understood what they were saying, but I didn't really understand, like, the way I, the way I can converse now with the Spanish. Yeah. Um, but they just wanted to learn, like, disarmaments. They wanted to learn how to evade, like, like roll away, how to tumble. It's just that kind of basic, basic kind of training, David. Yeah, that's interesting. And this was, like, the before Bloodsport ever came out, right? Or was it after Bloodsport? Before. Okay, so it's not like I they met, knew who Frank John, was because I met of the movie. John Claude when uh, John Claude was sleeping in his car. Yeah, that's crazy, man. You Matter hear fact, stories about that. that. You don't know if they're exaggerated or not, but I guess it's true. He was actually homeless. Yeah, he was. Wow. And then uh, Michelle. Wow. That's that. They, they'll tell you that's the truth. I mean, I'm a witness. Cause I, cause my car is right next to theirs. <laughs> you guys camping out in the street together. <laughs> we didn't have no place. You know I mean? He had his little car back then. And then, uh, but he was, uh, he lived up the street on there on Riverside. Mm. And then him and Michelle got a place, you know, Michelle, Michelle became like one of my best friends. He, he's a sweetheart. 
Matter of fact, he's the he's the rock behind JC. There's no right. question in my mind. Just the big but support. John, but JC, but JC, he that guy, that guy had nothing but tenacity, brother. I mean, that guy, that guy was that guy, he he was destined destined to do what he did mm-hmm. and i'm a i'm a I'll, I'll, i'm a witness to that being alive today that's cool yeah you were there yes. before he was van dam basically Did, didn't he used to go i think his headshot used he used to go by a name of like frank something instead of john claude back in the day i heard i don't know if you know anything about that because he wanted to be more like american and thought that would actually help him but little did he know the French or Belgium thing is actually the thing that kind of helped him. That's the first time I ever, I never heard him as Frank. There was only one Frank Deuce. Come on, man. <laughs> can't have two. You can't have two Frank Deuce unless he has his double. And, well, uh, that, that's, a, that's, that's Frank, a whole other story. <laughs> sometimes when I see Frank, I, I got to ask him some questions. Only, only, Jeff only Frank the real Dukes that. would know, <laughs> but that's just a joke. But, but, you know, John Claude, um, you know, because everyone, I mean, your channel, you guys really like them. And, and you know, I do too. Uh, you know, uh, just a little sidebar story. Um, years later, when I had my daughter, uh, Paulina, um, my daughter watched a movie where he played the clown. I think it was in The Quest, right? Oh, The Quest, yeah, sure. He was like yeah, a mind clown, like, yeah. Yeah, because her dad was a clown sometimes. That was a professional clown, by the way. People don't know that. Oh. A real professional clown. I ride a unicycle, all that stuff. Wow. But anyway, so she liked she liked the clowns, and she said, "I want to meet that clown, Daddy." And I said, "Okay." So we went down. Jean Claude used to hang out at uh, Cafe Roma, mm-hmm. and I went down and I seen him, and you know we got to know each other. I say, "Hey, JC, uh, my daughter wants to meet you," and he goes, "Oh, okay. When do you want to see me?" And I said, uh, "Next Wednesday." You know, he says, "Next Wednesday, I'll be here." Took my daughter down. He was there. Nice. He gave my daughter a kiss and gave her some ice cream. And, you know, he's a, he's a stand up guy, man. I knew him be, before he had, you know, he used to, he used to have a, a white truck mm. and he used to ride around in the truck. And then when, after um, I stopped going to Frank school, I went to Benny the Jets and he used to come by Benny the Jets and visit me all the time. And he used to have a little dog. I can't remember the dog's name. But um, he used to have that white truck. And then, then he had, a, I guess it was his first son, uh, was Christopher, I think it was. And he married a, a, a lady by the name of Gladys Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And she was a bodybuilding champion. And mm-hmm. I met her because we worked out at the Woodland Hills uh, Club. And I, I met her a couple times. And she was a, a bodybuilder. But uh, Jean-Claude used to work out at this gym with this I don't know if he was he was European, like from, I don't know what country it was, but the, the guy took him in and it was like, it was an incredible gym. They had like a lot of old equipment and Jean-Claude, he used to like the cables. He used to, he used to enjoy uh, working with the cables. Mm-hmm. And he said that got brought more of his, and I said, okay, cool. And Michelle was training there with him, but I don't remember that. I think his name was Frank. That guy was named Frank, actually. Yes. Maybe that's what you were talking about. Oh, or maybe and that's where he got the idea mind. for the name. Let huh? me ask you this, man. So when John Claude went down to the Jet Center where you were at, obviously Benny the Jets um, training center with guys like Don Wilson and uh, everybody in the kickboxing world training. Did John Claude train with you guys, or did he just visit you and in, in chat, or did he actually train with you guys there? Um, not for, not, I don't recall. I don't recall him. Um. He did train down there, but, you know, he came in the back to lift the weights with me, you know, and he liked to stretch all the time. You know, he was, he's always into stretching. And I, at that time, I was a gymnast. I mean, I had the same, you know, flexibility he did. So, I mean, we stretch a little bit and talk. Mostly, mostly he talked about is what he wanted to do, you know, because he already did uh, no, sur- uh, no, no Retreat, No Surrender, yeah. And he did that one, and he did Blood, and he said, hey, I want to do a bigger movie. And I told him, I said, dude, man, you know, you know, you got such a heavy accent, you know, you know, you got to I gotta go to some acting schools. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he took that advice. I think he went to some speech because he started articulating better as time went on. Mm-hmm. And then um, the thought is, is that uh, he really. Uh, 
I mean, a guy that he was, he was definitely, that guy didn't have, I mean, he didn't have nothing to, to where he's at now. It's incredible for that, yeah. for that Hollywood story, you know? Oh I'm yeah, saying? sure. That That's, that's a story. <laughs> no doubt. It's quite something. Um, but your story is very interesting too. So you, you auditioned for Lionheart. There was like a thousand people there, right? Didn't you take a bunch of guys from the Jet Center with you, like Billy Blanks oh, okay. and all these other so, guys, yeah, Sash yeah. Williams, so, etc.? Yeah, so, okay, I'll tell you that story. So, so hey, we had this on tape, might as well. So I had an orange uh, Volkswagen van that I was sleeping in at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had... I had the Weaver triplets, those three black guys, they were triplets. I had them. I had a guy by the name of Billy Blanks. Mm -hmm. Billy Blanks. I had a guy named Mark D'Alessandro. And I think I had Thunderwolf in the van, too. I don't I don't remember if I had Thunderwolf. But so I had all these guys in the van, and I, I said, we're going to go down and try out for uh, this movie. They called it Wrong Bet or something. Wrong, I don't know, Wrong I thought it was wrong. Yeah, that direction. was one of the titles. They call that that in uh, some countries still. That's what the movie's known as. But uh, obviously in U.S. it's Lionheart. But yeah, same, same movie. It's so many different, five different titles, I think. Yeah, so it was something like that. And so it was, it was down on Coldwater. Frank had a school. And uh, we went down there. And then uh, Michelle was uh, like, so you went up there. And, and Jean-Claude was there actually too. So mm -hmm. We had a, we had a re, you know a reunion. I said, "Hey, brother, how you doing?" Blah blah blah. You know, French people they kiss each other on the cheek, so they kiss me on both my cheeks, and then uh, that's the way they do. See, I say como se va. I speak a, I live with a French fan, so I understand a little bit of it. So I I speak a little bit of that. Not I'm not fluent as much as in Spanish. So we said that, and Sheldon had all the lights up, and we went out there, and the Weaver Chippers got up, and they did their boxing. And then uh, Billy went up and he did his thing because uh, me and Billy used to train together and uh, at his garage with Ty Mack, the guy from. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Barry Gordy's the last dragon. Yeah. Yeah. So he used to train with Billy. Billy trained him. And, you know, you know, like Billy suggests another story. But anyway, getting back to the uh, Lionheart movie. So Jean-Claude, he trained us. And I mean, he auditioned us, I mean, and. Uh, I got up and I said, I'm this and that. I do some Kung Fu and some boxing. And then Michelle, we moved around. And then we sparred a little bit, you know, was moving around. And then uh, Sheldon said, thank you very much. And I just left. And I got all the guys. Then Billy kind of got into it with, uh, with Michelle. They kind of got a little, it got a little uh, heated there. Re you mean just when they were sparring? They were, they got a little. Yeah, heated. they got a little, you know, they got a little heated. You know, it's got that they got started escalating. And then, you know, Sheldon cut it and, you know, and then, you know, Billy, Billy, uh, we're driving back, you know, no Billy, you know, I was cracking up with Billy, Billy probably hate me for telling but Billy wanted to go back and, you know, he wanted to, Billy, uh, you know, Billy was, you know, he was, he was, he was a badass guy. That's why it escalated. You know, Michelle was a boxer. He's a boxer, put two guys, two tigers in the cage in there, but it was all good. They became friends and Billy got in the movie. Every one of the guys that I took, except for the, the Weaver triplets got parts in that movie. Mm, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so when did you find out? Like you, you left. You did your audition. You left. When did you find out you actually got the part? Um. So it's like about. I think it was like two weeks later. I, you know, back then we didn't have cell phones. We had pagers, and I got a pay, page, and they said that. Uh, I know it was a production company. I, I, I Let me see, what was the name of it? Imperial Entertainment, was it, David? Yeah, yeah. It was Imperial. Yeah, they called up and they said, uh, is this Mr. Langton, Jeff Langton? Said, yes. And they said, uh, uh, yes, you got the part of the New York City Street Fighter. And I said, oh, great. And, he said, and they said, you're going to be filming in uh, Sherman Oaks. Can you be there? And I said, how much does it pay? Mm -hmm. Were you going to get a sag daily and bumps and blah, blah, blah? I said, okay. Well, I needed the money, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Wasn't, I didn't realize what that movie was going to do. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 
I didn't know it. I mean, I that's the whole story. But so I so I went there and um, you know I went there that day and uh, the vest I'm the vest the black vest I'm wearing in the movie. Mm-hmm. The person that gave that to me was Mickey Work. Gave me that vest. Oh really? That's his. That's hilarious. <laughs> Mickey Works like when how did that how did you get that did you just say hey here's a cool vest man no 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 so so what happened was um there was a guy by the name of george christie and george christie um he was a president of a motorcycle club and george used to do kung fu with eric lee and i met george i didn't know who george was and so i trained at uh i was doing kung fu with eric lee on lancashire Mm -hmm. boulevard and uh and George and me became friends. And George would always come in with a sweatshirt on and we would do Kung Fu together, like training partners. Mm-hmm. After a while, you know, we got to be friends and he goes, hey, uh, what's going on with you? And I said, I don't have a job. And, you know, kind of like from bouncing cows from house to house. And he goes, you need a job? He goes, uh, I hear you do security work from Sifu, Eric. And I said, yeah. And so George... Uh, said, hey, can you meet me down in Beverly Hills? I said, yeah, why? And he goes, well, I got this guy named Mickey Wark. And I said, Mickey Wark, the actor? He goes, yeah. I go, you know him? Oh, yeah, I know him. He goes, meet me down there on Friday night. And I said, okay. So I went down there, and George was there. And George, you know, rolls in there. He's wearing a Hell's Angel uh, thing. And I go, I know who these guys are. Mm-hmm. I said, George, you're a Hell's Angel? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm the president. I go, what? Wow. He goes, I'm the president. I know this guy like two or three months. Ago. Quiet. And uh, and George uh, said, uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce you to Mickey. And I go, okay. I was, I was stunned. Like I was stunned. And uh, this guy's like this guy's like one of the nicest guys. George Christie is one of the I, I still communicate with one of the nicest guys. Um, you can get his books. uh Exile from Front Street, you can get the book on his website. But George Christie was a president of the Hells Angels of the Ventura chapter and a personal friend of mine. I love the guy. And he introduced me to Mickey, and Mickey goes, hey, you're friends with him? You need a job? And he threw me this, this shirt with these flames on it. it. said, Mickey and Joey's it was a candy store. It was in Beverly Hills, right down from Cafe Roma. And then he goes, oh, here, here, take this vest. And he gave me the leather vest. Okay. Okay. So he gave me the leather vest and the, you wear the T-shirt under with the flames. And, you know, you wore the leather vest. And that was the, uh, that was the outfit for the security guys. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I told him, I said, I give, I try to give, he goes, no, yeah, I gave that to you. That's yours. So me and Mickey got to be friends. I used to go see him all the time and we got to be friends and, uh, and he basically, uh, you know, took me under his wing and I worked for him. And uh, everybody knows that. And then George, you know, George went on to, you know, uh, you know, do what he did. I think I think that um, from what, what the, the public is, is that he quit the Hells Angels. And, you know, because, he, you know, he was kind of like uh, he was uh, like a peacemaker between the, the different clubs. You know, but but George, you know, he's, you know, you know, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. And I owe him a lot because, you know, he gave me an opportunity to work. And I still talk to him this day. Just talked to him the other day. And, uh, you know, matter of fact, he was going to mar- uh, manage uh, Terry the Terminator Davis. Okay. And uh, so I mean, there's a lot of people that I've run into, you know, and, you know, a lot of colorful people. uh Met a lot of colorful people, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different people, but but speaking on behalf of George, I mean, you know, that guy um is a is a fantastic man and uh and I and I call him my friend. I'll do, you know, I'll always be there for him and it's like he was there for me. You know, I mean, instead of working out with the guy for two months and I oh, there's another guy. Oh, real, yeah, real, yeah, was... Jeff, real, real quick though, the vest. So for Lionheart, did basically Sheldon or any of the producers just say, just bring whatever outfit you think would be best for the character. Is that how you ended up just saying, Hey, I'm going to let me think, let me think about that for a minute because, because the vest, there's something toward that vest. And, uh, and this, I'll tell you about the vest. Um, so (laughs) 
I think it is, you know, because I, I wore my boots and my leather, and I said, I wanted to give tribute to uh, Mickey Wark. I wanted to give tribute and, and to, you know, to George and, you know, and I used the name Sonny in that thing. That was, uh, that was my thing, you know, but I don't want to get into that. But uh, so I remember the vest and I brought the vest. I put it on and, uh, you know, without my shirt. And, uh, and Sheldon said, these things were hanging down, the leather, mm. they, they hang down. And he tied it up under there. So I don't want to hang it down because it's going to do in the camera like this. Yeah, sure. It's going to do fluttering. So he did that and he loved it. And I, they, they slicked my hair back, put a tattoo on me. And that was it. Hey. I still had the vest. Yeah, and right. I want a million, a million plus for it if you want to buy it. <laughs> I mean, it could go well, for well, something. Much, I don't know about a million, but the, the fact that no, it's no, Mickey no, no. Hey, Works hey, vest listen, in Lionheart. Listen. Hey, listen, I, I want to, no, I, I want two million for it. If someone wants to buy it, it's two million dollars. Well, with you know, inflation, have... maybe somebody would have to spend that much on it these days. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's a piece of history, man. I'm going to pay two, you know, I mean, that that's uh, Sonny's vest from mine. Or not just yeah. like the Warriors. I remember I'm a cult figure now. After uh, the Blu-ray came out, I'm a, I'm a cult figure, what they say. Yeah, and I got the, the wristband. My daughter has that, the black wristband. And I didn't have any tattoos, and they painted that tattoo. And one of the scenes is, look, you can see, kind of rubbed off. Mm. And they didn't, they didn't do continuity. They're rushing. So I went and I did the movie. And uh, so I went over to Frank. I said, you know, all I was supposed to do um, was just fight Jean-Claude. And I said, well, you know, come on, Frank. You know, like, help me out here, man, you know. So I had a roommate. His name was Satch Williams. Satch was a black guy that I fought in the beginning. Sure. And then, uh, you know, so we do the thing. And uh, so me and Frank, I said, hey, Frank, uh, can I, we started talking back and forth. I said, hey, I want to say, hey, can, hey, you know, cause I say, hey, you're kind of pretty, you know. I don't know if I want to fight you. Oh, fuck you. Or, you know, what I'm saying. I don't want a person on the show. And um, so he goes, yeah, that's a great idea. But, hey, so when you fight the black guy, we turn him around, you kick him in the balls. Frank came up with this. He said, let's do lunch sometime. I said, Frank, come on, man. He goes, no, just do it, Jeff. I said, okay, fine. Come on, let's come on. do lunch sometime. <laughs> so I kick him in the balls, and then that's how I led him to Jean's squad. So we shot that, I think it was like two days. I think I worked, I think we uh, had rehearsal. Then we shot the next day and another day. And then the same day I shot the scene, we had a big fight scene with Jean-Claude, but they canceled it. And Jean-Claude said, well, hey, I'm gonna do a roundhouse kick and you chin the nuts. And I said, I gotta get the same money. I gotta get out of here early. So I did, I did it. And, uh, and then when I got in my van, after all the hoopla and everything, I started thinking, I said, this, this, this guy kicked, punched me in my nuts. I said, you know, hey, man, when people see this, man, they didn't think that this, this, this French guy kicked my ass. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I'm driving out of the, I'm driving out of the garage. And I, I, I go to the pay phone because pay phone, call my mom and, I was I was I was in tears, man. I was in tears when I came out of the garage. Just let this guy, you know, you know, beat my ass. I didn't I didn't I didn't comprehend, you know. I didn't comprehend, you know, it's a movie. Yeah. You understand? You don't you don't comprehend things like that. And so I called my mom and said, Hey, I'm done with this stuff. I'm never gonna do this shit again. Mm. Bullshit. I'm gonna go be a mechanic like I always wanted to be. I want to be a Ferrari mechanic. Mm -hmm. That's what I really wanted to be. She's all, oh, and I said, I don't really want to come back home. So I was going to go to New York, back to my aunts. And I was going to go to Italy, and I wanted to be a Ferrari mechanic. That's what I wanted to be in my life. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, fast forward, let me try to, you know, I'll tell you the story. So I go to the, they had these kickboxing from the Jazz, the train at the Jet Center. And they have these kickboxing bouts at uh, the Jet Center. And Jean-Claude is there. 
And John Claude goes, Jif, 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 Jif. I turn around and go, what, what, what's up, bro? He goes, we got picked up. We got picked up. We got picked up. We got picked up. I said, who picked us up? He goes, he goes, we need to, you need to go do a looping. I go, what? <laughs> Lou, Lou, what? I go, I go, slow down, man. What are you talking about? He goes, you need to do looping. I said, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you got to go, you got to go see your lines. And, you know, go, they're gonna, blah, blah, you know, and I'm saying, I don't understand. He, he was all like, He's all excited. He says, we got the big tub, you know, we're so blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I got a big deal. And I'm going like, you know, he's like all excited. I'm saying like, hey, man, I can understand what the hell you're saying, dude. <laughs> Come back, hey. I'm saying in French, I, probably, I understand you better if you're saying in French, JC. And um, so he goes, what's your number? I said, I, I go, do I have an impression of him? <laughs> so so he gives me his number, I give it to him, and then they call me. So I go down to Universal. I go down to Universal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the guy gets in there and he goes, you ever did looping before? I said, I don't even know what that is. I know what Fruit Loops are, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk, he starts laughing. You know, I always say stupid stuff. And he goes, okay, when the, when the thing goes beep, beep, beep on the third beep, you say your lines. I said, well, what lines? He goes, well, we got to do the PG version and say, hey, you're kind of pretty. I don't know if I want to fight you or kiss you. Yeah. You know, for PG back then. Mm -hmm. I said, that sounds like easy. I could do that. So I did it the first time. I didn't do too long. He goes, hey, uh, can you, you know, just think that you have them in front of you. Like, you know, stand and think he's in front of you. I go, okay. Mm -hmm. So I did it. And then he said, hey, do the line, you know, F you. And I did that. And so we were in there for about a couple hours. Right, David? We were in yeah. there for a couple hours. And then he said, okay, that's a wrap. I said, cool. You know, walk out of the place. I didn't think anything of it. So at the time, I was traveling from different place to different place. That's what actors do. You know, in your life, you're you're, you're broke and you have money. So they sent the check. This is a true story. This will be in my book eventually. Um, so I get the check, and there's like, um, it's a lot of zeros on the on the check. Nice. There's a lot of zeros. <laughs> so I open up, and look at my eyes, and said, "Shit, man, they gave me this much. Like it's like you know, like six, seven grand or some shit like wow. that. Some ridiculous amount of money. That's true. I don't care what Sheldon says. That's the truth. They gave me a lot of money. So I called. I called over to uh, Universal. Said the payroll department. Said, "Hey, listen." Uh, this is Jeff Langton. I did some some looping over mm -hmm. at. Uh, I said there's there's an enormous amount of money here, and um, I said, well, Mr. Langton, how much is that? And I told him, and then uh, he said, uh, yeah, no, that's how much it is. I said, so I went down and cashed the check. Nice. So I now now you know I could go down and get a, a steak dinner, you know, someplace with some spaghetti, and I was flying high. Mm -hmm. So. I go on and keep working out because, listen, I have a saying, you know, everybody's a has-been, and I don't take this personal, everybody, but everyone's a has-been. The day that they call rap on the thing, you're looking for another job. And I could go into another story why I say that, and basically that's what I just like looking for another gig, you know? Mm -hmm. So then um, I come home one day, and remember those those answer machines with the where they, they – has like a tape. Yeah, sure. It has a tape in it. Mm -hmm. So I get to the, I come home and I see like 35, 40 messages. I said, yeah, my, my uh, machine, I don't, you know, people, I get maybe two or three calls a day, like 35 messages. Wow. Hi, this is Jimmy. Uh, I was your childhood friend. I just saw you on TV. Hey man, how you doing? Hey, this is Janelle. Uh, hey, Jeff, I just saw you. You know, Hey, my mom is giving my phone number out to everybody. Mm. So I'm getting all these phone calls because I'm saying, like, what the hell are these people talking about, man? So I get a, so I go to uh, flip on the TV, Lionheart, Jean Claude Van Damme, blah blah blah, and all of a sudden I see me. I say, what the f? They're playing this thing, David, over and over and <laughs> over. I said, damn, man, I'm all over the TV set. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, like, what the hell? So then um, 
fast forward, they called, they called me up and um, they said, Hey, we're going to have a premiere of this. We want you there. I said, okay. So I get, I get all the guys from the jet center. Everybody said, <laughs> my, I sit next to this guy named Jake is Jake. Jake was a professional boxing trainer. The guy looked like Billy. The guy was handsome, man. I mean, a guy was, you know, he's sitting right next to me and I had all the other guys, you know, so I start watching this thing, and I'm saying, "Wow, this movie's pretty good." Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I come on, and I said, "Gosh, darn! Look how big my head is! <laughs> and my head is my head is huge! And my head take up like the whole screen." I said, "Look at my head!" And then, "Hey, look at my head!" So they, they, that, so the fight scene goes on. You know, in a in a theater, it's like you can. Yeah, you can see everything, man. So I'm sitting there fighting my, my roommate, Satch. And I go, I go, Jesus Christ, Lord. And he said, man, this is really good. And then, then I walk out, the, the girl and this, and I walk out to Jean-Claude, I say the line, and everyone just went crazy in the theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were going there, cracking up and laughing. And, and then, uh, so the end of the movie, this is a true story. I go out. I'm not going to name the guy, but this guy goes, hey, you let that little French guy kick your ass? And I punched the guy. I just punched him. I didn't even know. I just wow. I hit the guy right in the face. And he goes, hey, you're my friend. Why you just hit me in the face? I knocked him back. You know, he's grabbing his mouth. And I said, hey, man, no, no, no. That guy didn't. I mean, I, you know, he didn't kick my ass. That guy can't kick my ass and all this stupid shit was going around in my brain. And, uh, and I, you know, and I like John Claude. I loved him. You know, I said, like, I, I go, you know, like, this is a movie, man. And, you know, get your shit together. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the movie goes on, David. And, and basically, uh, next thing I know, everybody, I go to his places. Hey, you're that guy from Lionheart. You're Sonny from Lionheart. Hey, you're <laughs> this guy. Hey, hey, you want to sit over here? Hey, uh, can I be saying, I never had this happen before when people giving asking for my autograph is to like, why would you want my autograph? Mm -hmm. So that movie, that movie got me a three picture deal with PM entertainment. I started in a movie called the final impact with Lorenzo Lamas. I started in a movie called maximum force with Sam Jones. John Saxon was in it. Mickey Rooney was in it. Sonny Landham was in it all these famous actors. And here I am, Jeff Langton. The guy was the bouncer at a nightclub. And that's when I started going to acting school. And I went to acting school for four years. I studied with um, uh, first Charles Conrad, Chris O'Brien. I give him thanks and praise. Um, and I started with Jeremiah Comey. And then a guy by the name of Victor Campos used to be a fighter for uh, Costi Amato. He was my mentor. And then I became in the master's class, actor studio master's class. So I learned the craft of acting, put myself, my attention outside of myself due to the fact that choices awareness is a creative source of acting, putting yourself in an imaginary circumstance and becoming believable. Let me ask you this, Jeff. Go ahead. Because you were very believable in Lionheart. So, and that was before you took formal acting classes. So... How how many takes did you have to do? Like, did Sheldon Lettich just give you really good direction because you knocked it out the park? Um, let's put it this way: Sheldon Sheldon had a vision. Mm -hmm. He had a vision, and Sheldon, because Sheldon was an ex marine, I give a lot of credit to his his discipline as a marine because my father was a marine. Sheldon had a vision, and Sheldon knew how to bring it out of you, okay? That's why Sheldon has been successful, because his training in the Marine Corps. That's okay? interesting, because he got really great performances out of Van Damme in, in Lionheart and Double Impact, out of Mark Dukaskis in Only the Strong. Very experienced with the martial arts, but I think he's a serious actor. So after Lionheart, you got the three-picture deal with PM Entertainment. Now, the first film was Final Impact with Lawrence Lamas. So did you even have to audition for that? Or did they just say, hey, Jeff, you got a three-picture deal. Here's one of the films. We want you in. This one's yours. No. No, I had I had to go audition for that. And um, 
there was about every every guy in Hollywood. I'll name them: uh, Nikki Hill, the Dragon, Del Jacoby, Vince Bonacco, Gary Daniels. Oh, he auditioned for so, that. That's funny. So, um, everybody when I so. <laughs> So I, I walked up and I see all my friends. And this, the lines like like a new uh, movie just came out. The line was so long, mm -hmm. and uh, so I walk up and they say, hey, "Jeff, you got to go back to the line." I said, "No, I got to go to the front, and I got to register in." You know, they that's what they told me. So you know, and there was a lot of guys, a lot of testosterone that day. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, so I walked up, and the guy says. Uh, yeah, can I have your name? Because you got to back then. You got to sign in, okay? Back then, you got to sign your name and you got to put your SAG number, all that, all that stuff. They don't do that no more. And um, so the guy goes, "Oh, you're Jeff Langton. Uh Yeah, just wait right here." And I said, "Okay." So the guy, the guy goes in and uh, he says, uh, uh, "Come on in," you know, "Come on in." I said. I said, what about all these other guys? I don't want to piss them off. He goes, no, no, no. No, we've been waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, no, we've just been waiting for you. We want to see you. I said, okay, fine, cool. So I went in. And back then, they used to go, okay, hi. Uh, tell us somebody. Said, hi, my name is Jeff Langton. And you know, I'm with, I got three black belts or six black belts or 500 black belts or whatever. You know, I've been doing this and that. You, you know, you give your spiel. And then uh, the guy would say, okay, turn to the left, turn to the right. You know, spin around, show us what you got, blah, 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 blah. And the guy goes, okay. Uh, he goes, uh, you just did that movie, uh, Lionheart, didn't you? And I said, yes. And they go, okay, thank you very much. And that's the end of that. So then I walk out. This Now, here's the repercussions of, you know, hey, Jeff, man, we've been waiting in line. And, you know, like, hey, how can you walk in? And, well, you think you're a star now? And I thought you were cool. And they're all pissed off, you oh, know? yeah. A lot of jealous people, sure. That's just the way it is back then. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way it is. But they're all cool. You know, everybody you know, everybody was just trying to get a gig, man. That's the basic But basically, let me ask this and try to better understand. You got a three-picture deal with PM Entertainment, but you still, I guess, have to do the audition process, though it looked like they kind of, like, gave you priority over these other guys. But you still have to audition for these roles anyway. Even well, though you for, for Final Impact, they didn't, they didn't sign me. They didn't sign me. Uh, they didn't do that till after I did the final impact. I didn't have oh, to audition. You a three picture deal after final impact. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes. Yeah. Sense. So there was like, well, actually, I did Maximum Force, and then I did this O.J. Simpson movie that never got released because he got arrested at that time. I did some. I did some type of part, and then, then after that, my manager at the time he said, uh, "We're not going to be doing any of these more," and that's another whole. That's another another chapter, I, you know. That I just for Stone Cold, and um, I got the part basically, and then they 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 cut me, and they they picked the, the guy who was a comedian because I didn't have a name. Mm. So that's another story. But going back to the Final Impact, so I'm at home, and um, I get a call, and they said, uh, you, "Hey, you, you know, can you be down at this gym?" It was Furbon's gym in, um, off of DeSoto. I don't know what town. I, I think that's Woodland Hills, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went down, and that's where I met Lorenzo Lamas. And there was another guy by the name of Art Camacho there. Okay. And Art, and Art um, he was like, uh, Eric, Eric Lee was there. Because Eric Lee was a fight coordinator. Mm -hmm. And um, so they basically... Uh, Said I'm gonna meet Lorenzo, and so Lorenzo came out and said, "Let's say move around, get some grappling, and all that other stuff." I said, "This kind of odd, you know, because he, I guess he he didn't know, he wanted to get to know me or something, sitting and work with me or something. I don't know what it was." And um, and then he says, uh, "Okay, that's cool." And then I met this kid, Michael Worth. You know, okay. Michael Worth. Yeah, sure. That was his fake first starry movie. And Michael was a sweetheart. I love that guy so much. He's such a wonderful guy. And uh, so I just told him, I, you know, I tried to give him my encouragement and everything. And he was just a great kid. He just, 
That guy was full of life, that kid. You ever watched Jake fight before? It's the first time in person. Go to school, kid. That kid, that kid slept in Santa Monica with his dog in the back of his truck. He had a kind of similar story. And I just saw, I just saw Michael recently and uh, at Frank Stallone's uh, thing. I had a reunion. Oh, really? Got all the guys together and saw Michael. Michael's doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. So anyway, sweet. And I said, okay, whatever, man. You know, because in that town, you know, you at that time, you know, they could tell you have something. Until you're doing it, you don't really know if you have it, right? Mm -hmm. so so then I wait and you know a couple of weeks go by and they call me said you know are you still available I said yes and then and they call me and next thing I know I was in Vegas shooting that movie okay yeah it's cool and I did I did the movie and um and, and Lorenzo you know uh he was uh He's about one of the best martial artists I think I've ever worked with. How so? Just I've like technique-wise or what? Lorenzo Lorenzo was an Aido guy with the sword, the life, mm -hmm. the life katana. He did kendo. He did grappling, jiu-jitsu. He, he studied with Hil Cho. Um, the best out of all of them. Out of wow. all of them. I but you, you train... Um, obviously with Van Dam and then Billy Blanks and all those guys, but you're saying Lorenzo Lamas. Because I don't think his name comes up in the discussion when people say best martial artist ever on film. I mean, they might say Billy Blanks. They might say Jean-Claude Van Dam. I don't think anybody had really said, oh, Lorenzo Lamas. You know, it's like... Well, I did. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting because he worked with all these what guys. If so. that, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, I, I don't take anything away from, you know, my other brothers. No, of course not. All my brothers, you know, Billy, Billy's great. Mm -hmm. But Lorenzo, Lorenzo, I mean, he had the craft. Wow. I mean, a lot of these guys, I mean, they they, they do they just do kicking. They don't, you know. I mean, they don't. Oh, because he did everything, they, like they you keep, said, weapons, grappling, everything. Mm -hmm. You got to keep moving forward, man. You just can't stay like, hey, I'm a Taekwondo guy. You got to do weapons, gymnastics, boxing, grappling. Got to do all those things. You can't just be one one dimensional in, in a movie industry. And um, I'm a master of all, but a master of none sometimes. But the, the point what I'm trying to say is that Lorenzo, out of all the guys that I ever worked with, that guy had, that guy was, that guy stunt wise, stunt wise, he never, the guy would never hit you. You never had to think negative, like, oh, this guy's gonna hit me. Have to worry about hitting me. He was always on mark. The guy, like when we did that fight scene in the graveyard, he was there a couple hours before marking it all out. I didn't even know that. Oh, you know, so he 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 takes that seriously. But but he's a master e Aido guy, and you know how hard that is to master Aido. Mm. That's what the life life katana. You know, where you put it like an inch from someone's head. You know, that's what he did, and he studied with the Japan. Japanese people, plus Hil Cho. Hil Cho, we studied with him. Plus, you know, Lorenzo went to a um, a military school. That's where he went to school and he learned how to box. You know, he knew how to wrestle. He knew he knew how to grapple. Mm -hmm. So we try, I try to, you know, and you, if you walk, go back and you watch those scenes, you could see him. You know, and at that, and he did Re Renegade, you know. Renegade yeah, that was a cool a, show. I remember watching that in high school. Like, Lorenzo, the first day he said to me, i never forget this. And I told Danny Trail this, and Danny this back. Lorenzo said to me, hey, Jeff, let's don't get to know each other all in one day. We're going to be here for the next two weeks. <laughs> sure. And he said that to me, and uh, that always stuck to me. But, you know, <laughs> but I understand what he was saying because... Like, he had his character, Nick, to play, and I had my character. Like, you get to know each other, then you can't. You understand? What? You go in there, you get your ass kicked. The, the, the guy was phenomenal as a martial artist, and I always give him credit. Hey, how long was the production for, uh, for Final Impact? Like, how long did you guys shoot that? 14 days. That was only a two-week shoot? That's ridiculous. Yep. 
Like back in the, it's that's like, ridiculous because they still had the DVD market and home video because Scott Atkins will complain. And it's a valid complaint that he has to shoot his movies in like three weeks. Whereas before you would get like two months or something back in the day with like, I think Bloodsport was probably like a seven week shoot, for example. So Final Impact was like literally two week shoot, the, the whole film. Yes, sir. That's ridiculous, man. You're telling me, though, do we work like 14 hour days? Yeah. So well, that, did, that's well, what I you were that. mentioning earlier, Jeff. You said they a lot of your stuff they only shot in one take. That's it. Like we that we got what we got. Move on. Well the thing is how they did it was rehearse, rehearse, and then they shoot it. Unless there's something really screwed up, that's all you get. That sucks. You telling me? <laughs> Two weeks. Jeez, I mean, one man. time I did this movie called The College Kickboxer. Oh yeah, yeah, you fought the main guy at the end of it. That was that's right. that one too. And the, the the people on that, they came from China. Wu Ping and the guy I'm still looking for him, if anybody could fight Tack Wing, that guy was the best coordinator. He was uh Donnie Yan, um, what's that guy? Uh John Wu, all those guys, they all came from the same place. Hmm. Because my Sifu when I was in Los Angeles, I met a guy by the name of Carter Wong. Carter Wong was uh, was Thunder in um, what was that movie, David? The, um, the Big James Trouble Wong. in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China. God bless you. And uh, and I met Carter at the Palace, and he came up to me, and Carter took me as a student. I trained with him for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I learned Iron Fist from him. How to do Iron Fist. I learned the, the single broadsword, double broadsword. I learned uh, butterfly knives. I learned um, touched on the quando. But he was my sifu, and I used to. He was like one of my best friends. Is that how you got into college kickboxers? Because you knew knew Carter Wong. Uh, college kickboxers. That's that's another that's another whole chapter on how that one came about. Um, there was a guy by the name of Eric Sherman. And Eric Sherman, he used to uh, direct film at the Pasadena uh, Performing Arts School in uh, Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And he taught directing there. His father was a famous director, Vince, Vincent Sherman. And Eric has a book out. You can probably buy it. It's about how to direct movies. It's by Vincent Sherman. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Eric Sherman. Okay. And uh, he talks about his father, talks about his life. And um, I just... I don't know, man. They called me. I think it was Harry Mock. Harry Mock called me and said, hey, uh, Jeff, are they, they're looking for somebody to play the bad guy. And I went down there and um, I met Eric Sherman. And then we shot the movie in San Jose. Mm -hmm. And we worked 16 hours a day on that movie, the Chinese. But the funny thing about the Chinese is that the Chinese guy let me, because I was a DP. I learned how to use the Aeroflex camera the BL2, BL3, but I wasn't a loader, but I could, I was a shooter because mm -hmm. I, I, cause I, I went to school for lighting. I'm a master lighter. And, um, I went, Manny Katz trained me how to be a lighter, but, uh, so tack wing said, Hey, I'll show you how to use a camera. I never forget this. This is very important. Back in the day when you have a BL that on the end of it, it's like kind of thing, a beige color lens thing. And he said, no, no, you, no, don't put the eye to the to the to the viewfinder. And I so I go, Tack, why? And he goes, You have a makeup on, it's gonna get the whole thing all screwed up. So I learned that from Tack. That stuck in my head to this day. That fight scene at the end, by the way, did you guys shoot that whole thing in one day? That fight scene that we did? At the end of college kickboxers. Um it's kind of a long fight. Two oh, days. yeah, two days. Yeah, at least had two days to do it. Okay. It was two days, and uh, they, they had a – the Chinese, they, they – you know, the first time I ever worked with Chinese is that they have – they bring a stunt team, and they'll, they'll do the choreograph because you're only going to get one or two takes at the most. That's it. Mm. you got to understand something. One take with a film camera is about 1500 bucks. Yeah. I mean, that's a minimum. That's for sure. It was $1,500 back then. I mean, you're talking in the 90s. I mean, what would that be now? I don't know. But so you get two takes, that's $3,000. Jeez. You, know, you have a digital camera, you could shoot 100 takes, I mean, 200 takes.
Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you're limited with time, but you know, you're not going through film or anything. So you, you do save money in that respect. So, so the point is what I'm saying is that the Chinese, what they did, they developed a system. And what their system was is they have, the person does a movement, like, you know, you have stand-ins, but they would be like the stunt stand and they would go through the movements and then uh, you'd be sitting there standing there watching them and they'd, they'd be doing get the camera, the lights, and then you got to go in and you got to, you got to, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. You know, there's no, they don't, they don't play around and they get, they get really ag agitated. You know, you can't, you, they don't like to joke either. You know, they, they're very serious <laughs> about what they do. And I saw that they're very, mi mi very uh, militaristic in what they do. So when they do all those movements, you know, they just do it slowly. And then they say, hey, go do it now. So you go out and you do it. And now you see me doing a kick and the dragon sweep, you know. And, you know, then I, I, I said, when we put that together, if you go back in history, you look at that. And I was trying to incorporate groundwork in, into my thing because I knew that, you know, I knew the Gracies. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that, that was, that was going to be a big thing coming through because, you know, you like in the 90s, the early 80s, 90s was ninjutsu, then it became kickboxer, then it became, you know, grappling. You know, you see that movie, uh, Red Belt with um, Joe, Joe Mattagna. Yeah, and, that's a good uh, movie. Oh, it's a great movie. What was that movie that, that uh, you turned me on to that I really like? The one about the Marine? You're Warrior. the one that told me about that. Warrior. Warrior, that's it. Yeah, that's a good movie. Wow. That was that was uh, one of the best movies I think I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. Because you got like best. you got Nick Nolte as the dad, you got um, Tom Hardy, you you got real drama, and that that's how they need to make martial art films like Red Belt and Warrior. Because yes, we get the fights, we, we get that, but we need the story, the drama, the characters, and those had that. That's why those stick out as as good films, not just good fight films. You're absolutely right. I'm, I'm going to tell the truth now, and this is, you know, but what that, you know, helicopter kick is basically what they call the trichette in uh, French. It's because uh, I studied ballet because mm -hmm. I was a collegiate gymnast and I couldn't stand on one foot. So my coach said, hey, you need to go to the ballet class. He was smart because there's a lot of hot girls in that class. Sure. But anyway, the trichette is a helicopter kick. And, and it's, a, it's a movement in ballet. And the thing is that people don't know is that Jean-Claude was a very good friend of Baryshnikov, okay? And the thing is that they, that they, Jean-Claude was a, was a study of ballet. And uh, that kick, he developed that kick from, from Tuchete. And you can ask him because it's the truth. Yeah, I mean, he come. He, it's so beautiful on screen, man. Like it, uh, it motivated so many people because it's just a beautiful display of athleticism. So it's almost, uh, it's the ballet technique, and he kind of added it to his karate repertoire, so to speak. So a lot of cinematic yeah, they, flair mean, in that. It, case. It, it, that's why they use it in ballet. Ballet is all about art and beauty, mm -hmm. you know, physical movement. I mean, if you ever saw Rishikov do the Trujillo. I mean, this guy would get, this guy would be, you know, four to five feet in the air. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So when Jean-Claude, I mean, I don't mean to, to bring that out, but, but people should know the truth that, I mean, is it a martial arts kick? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a martial arts kick. They call it a tornado kick, whatever you want to call it. But, but what he's doing is, 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 is from the art of ballet. It's called the Tujete. Ron de Jean Tujete. So when he does that, I mean he's he's excellent because he's he's skilled in that art of ballet. You know, a lot of boxers, you know, they study ballet because ballet's I I I I'm an advocate of people to study ballet, even you. You know, you should be in a ballet class because ballet because ballet will center you and put you in a, a good uh you know position and bounce and center you. And um it gives you lift and uh belly you know, would teaching. be beneficial for any athlete martial arts etc in my opinion uh, and van damme studied for years he was actually offered to uh be a professional dancer at a i forget which company but he had the the movie dream instead but he could he was that skilled and talented where he could have just been a professional ballerina basically if he wanted to 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And he has the right height too. You know, or are ballet he, dancers usually shorter, the guys? Well, the girls, the girls are like, you know, they're very small and you got to lift them up. And mm. I wasn't with that. I, I wanted to like the lady that taught me, her name was Gloria Moore. She was from the New York City Ballet Company. And mm. she loved me because I could, I could fly, man, at that time. She wanted me to be a ballet dancer. You know, back then, you know, here <laughs> Can I you am, imagine you know, Sonny in a tutu? <laughs> I didn't ever wear a tutu. I'm just saying that. I, never, I would never step with I mean, I, you know, I went in, the vest. Yeah, in gymnastics. I mean, if you go to my, uh, yeah, you go to my website, you can see the pictures of me. You know, I was the second tallest gymnast. I, I you know, I, I competed at West Valley College for two years. And I did in high school. And I studied under Wachiro Mickey, like I mentioned before. But, I, you know, I started, I mean, in eighth grade, I started gymnastics. And. You know, I mean, I could do, I mean, I could, I, I could do all that. Like, you know, I was sporting a double back. I could twist. I could do, you know, the side, side summy. But, um, you know, like they say, and, you know, it doesn't look good for uh, karate guys to point their toes. I think it does because it makes your legs look longer. <laughs> it's a joke, man. <laughs> you anyway, don't get anyway um, I mean, it looks good on film. Me and Jean Claude, you know, I mean, we used to go around Hollywood with our eight by tens, and you know, it's a dollar a piece. Put them <laughs> under the door. Jean Claude, you know, Jean Claude, you know, this way, what I'm talking about, a guy that really wanted it. When when AFM came into Santa Monica, Jean Claude was over there early in the morning, putting all his pictures to all those distributors in in um, the AFM, mm. and people don't know that about him. They don't know. They say, "Oh, you know, he's a pretty guy." He just been no. That guy worked his rear end off. Yeah, he had he more to than I no ever. Doubt. No, I mean he did, and 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 you know the thing is, is that I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud to call you know that he was part of my history and part of my life. You know, I love the guy. I love I love Michelle. You know, Sheldon, part of my life. I talked to him. I I try to keep in touch with people as much as possible because that's all we have is each other. Mm -hmm. You know, on this planet. And then, you know, the, then then in time as we expire, you know, people are saying, you know, where do you go? I got the answer for you. You call me anytime. I'll tell you what the answer is. You really want to know the answer. Hey, Jeff. We need that answer. I want to know. Let's do lunch sometime. <laughs>